Welcome back to Inside Marketing Design. I'm Charlie, I'm the Creative Director at ConvertKit, and this is a show where I interview my peers about how marketing and brand design functions at their companies. And today, I'm speaking with Monica Galvan, who is a Senior Marketing Designer at Instacart. Now, if you're based in the US, I'm sure you know what Instacart is, and you've probably used it yourself. I know I have when I've traveled there, but it's an app where you can order groceries, household items, beauty products even, and get them delivered by a personal shopper. Monica has been on the team for about about a year and a half and as a company Instacart is at around 3,000 people now so getting quite big. It was fascinating to talk to Monica about the growth that Instacart has seen throughout the pandemic as many more of us have obviously been ordering our food online uh, and of course we also get into loads of great details about her work as a marketing designer. Before we get into this episode though I do want to give a big shout out to our sponsor Webflow. Webflow is my favorite way to build and launch websites but something else I use Webflow for sometimes is prototyping. I made this mock-up for example in Webflow recently of an idea I had for the ConvertKit home page. I used Webflow interactions to build out this animation in a timeline so that I could show the developer what I had in mind for the homepage and it really helped to communicate that vision. Even if the marketing site at the company you work for is on a different platform, you can still get a lot of value out of Webflow. Check it out at insidemarketingdesign.co slash Webflow. But now let's get into it and take a look inside marketing design at Instacart. Welcome to the show, Monica. I'm excited to have you here and to showcase this like different side of design and tech, right? Instacart is this product that so many people use. I've used it before when I've been in the US and I'm excited to hear more about the marketing design side of it. Yeah, I can't wait to tell you more about it. Let's start by talking about the team. This is where I always like to start. It gives us some context of where your role fits in within the company and where design fits in within the org structure at Instacart. Can you tell us a little bit more about the team you're on, who you report to, how many other designers are on it? Yeah, so I'm on what we call the brand and marketing team, abbreviated as BAM. Uh, and we've actually gone through quite a few. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've actually gone through quite a, a lot of like leadership changes. We used to be under the design org, which was more, I would say, product design focus. I would say earlier this year, we had an official split. And so now we're part of our own. And that's you know where we started with the new brand and marketing team, a new VP of marketing, new creative leadership under that. So that's the team that I'm on. And I would say even within that, there's a couple of subsets, mostly like director level um, and within mine. So the creative team that's on the brand and marketing team, I would say there's about 19 people from, you know, the very top, the executive creative director, the uh, creative director of CRM, which is uh, my manager. They're hiring another creative director on the marketing side. And then under that, we have probably about 11 designers including production design outside of that we also have like a, a motion designer who recently is now cool. an associate creative director of motion uh illustrator and that's where it is so far but we're hiring a lot so it'll it'll grow a lot so i guess that would be about 30 people on, on our direct team yeah nice and it sounds like you got a lot of different skill sets covered there as well which is cool yeah i think that's one of the things that i looked forward to most when i joined instacart and i'm still excited about is that you know with having all of these different people with different specialties we can really get focused on those things like I've never worked with a dedicated motion designer so that's so awesome that I could just hand off design and, and an idea and he's so awesome he'll come back with something in a couple of hours and you know I just love being able to do projects like that that I wouldn't be able to at, at smaller companies yeah that's super cool man I remember having a motion designer on the team at my first job in tech and it was wonderful and I feel like I've missed it ever since it's something I'm trying to bring back to convert kit through working with a contractor in the coming yeah. year because it's just so fun to design something and have someone like make it come to life you know so I know at Instacart you have brand and marketing designers on the team right your title is senior marketing designer but there are also people on the team whose title is brand designer which I found fascinating because a lot of people use these terms interchangeably I do too sometimes mostly because I feel like that's what other people do so I'm like just trying to show them that this content I'm making is for them like we talk about brand design we talk about marketing design what is the difference between those two for Instacart yeah that's a great question I know whenever I used to like look for jobs years ago I was always like what why are there so many prefixes to design? Right? Yeah. Can <laughs> and we all just the be jobs. designers? Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's like visual designer. What's that? <laughs> Aren't we all visual designers? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Same with creative designer. That's a job title I have a problem with. I'm like, ideally, we're all creative. <laughs> 
yeah we're actually hiring for one of those and I was like I don't understand why they have a different <laughs> title so yeah I'm still learning what that person will do but yeah at Instacart we have three brand designers six total marketing designers including myself but three mm-hmm. of those are more on the CRM side. So I can briefly talk about all three of those subsections because we're kind of building out our team in like these pod structures so that we're focusing on different things. I guess we're building out like a social pod and we're even going to hire designers that are specifically working on that, really growing out these little specialties. So the brand designers, they are working on things, obviously on the brand, Um, things Mm -hmm. that are kind of like paving the way of the voice and tone and the look and feel of the brand. A lot of them in the past have worked a great deal on illustration because Instacart was a very illustration heavy brand. So they would be the one that would work on new illustrations and really cultivating that style. And they're continuing to evolve that. So Instacart's kind of in like a a rebrand right now. And so we're working with an agency on that rebrand. I have no idea about the timelines on that probably next year kind of but they're working with them on that uh on like photo shoots and developing the style and really being in on those meetings uh to get feedback so i know that's a big part of their project one of the brand designers is located in canada so he works on a lot of the things on the enterprise side in canada so those are kind of the main things that they're working on but of course they also help out on uh, other marketing projects so marketing designers Essentially, I would say the big difference between brand and marketing designers is that marketing designers work on things that are driven by a marketing budget. There's money behind it, whether it be, you know, paid advertisement, ads, TV, out of home, billboards. It it could be anything. And and we've worked on a great variety of that over the past um, year and a half. So, yeah, things that are driven by money and performance. And then the CRM designers specifically. So I would say back in November or December of last year, I had conversations with my previous manager at the time. And there was talk about like me transitioning into being more CRM focused because when they hired me, that was like a big project I shared in my portfolio interview. And I just had a a deep knowledge and email and just really very system forward thinking in that sense. So they saw a big need for that. And this was just growing like crazy, the CRM side. So we had talks of like me transitioning into that solely. So I kind of consider myself like the first CRM marketing designer at Instacart. And we've since hired two other ones uh, back in the spring. So it's really slowly starting to grow as well as a production designer. And so we're focusing more on CRM, obviously, that being like the email component. For me, that's like life cycle. So thinking about the onboarding onboarding of people like a, a new user signs up for a free trial, or they just you know, to get them to make that first order and cultivating that relationship, new retailer launches, but really owning the email and the site side. So what happens when you click on, you know, this button in the email, what does that look like Mm -hmm. on the website or the app? So owning that, that part of the experience. But again, we also still help out on other bigger projects as needed, but that's our uh, focus. Well, yeah, that's um, a lot of focus. Yeah, is what I'm hearing in this team structure, right? There's a lot of designers, but everyone very clearly works on a specific part of the business or, you know, a specific part of the design needs. That's, That's really interesting. How would you describe the difference between a production designer and say what you do as a marketing designer? Yeah, we only recently got a production designer, a senior production designer. He joined, I think, July. Uh, And we also have like a new uh, contractor one that started. So he'll kind of just be floating around for the next few months working on various projects, more so for like the brand team, because this one sits on our team. So he's primarily focused on that, but, you know, helps out when he has time on other projects. Especially being on CRM team, there's a lot of repetitive work. I'm creating uh, new concepts, new designs for an email, and but then there's all the testing involved. Like, okay, this is the main creative, but then we're gonna test this to different audiences. We're gonna test different cent- incentives, non-incentive versus incentive, free shipping, free trial. There's all these variables. Um, uh, so like all the versions. So that's like one thing that we, really needed help with because the designers were just being bogged down by all of this repetitive, non-creative work. And our our time could be used to create more creative assets 
versus doing all of this versioning. Um, there's also like, you know, a lot of like masking, Photoshop, retouching, those kind of things with with convenience, which is a new initiative that we're launching, we launched this past summer, which is, uh, you know, trying to get things delivered from your favorite convenience stores. Maybe you want a Slurpee, a bag of chips, just whatever you might get at like a gas station or those those little stores around the corner. And so for that, we were really focusing on food photography. So that was a mm. that was really important. So there was a lot of like retouching and going on there. So the production designer is helping out on a lot of that. And the designers are working on the comps and creating different ideas. And once it's approved by leadership, then the production designer will take over and kind of finish things with the eye of the designer. So I would say it's just they're working on the more repetitive tasks um, refining things, making things better. Um, he's also been helping me out with some things that I hand off to the dev team as well. Yeah, again, that creates more focus, right? For the other designers on the team, everyone knows what they can focus on and you know their time is best spent in their specific area of focus. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I know you're not on like the brand side of things, but obviously you work with the Instacart brand a lot. Can you just give us a rundown of like, how would you describe the Instacart brand? And we'll have some visuals on screen, but for any audio listeners, let's just, um, yeah, give them a description. Honestly, in the last year and a half that I've been here, there's been a lot of like little rebrands <laughs> here and there. So there's been a lot of changes. Before it was like very illustration focused. There was like these kind of cute little maybe basic uh, characters that would be like the, the customer and the shopper and, and that was just things that we used on repeat our photography style honestly wasn't anything that stood out so we had like a 1.5 brand refresh and that was when the brand designers refined some of the illustrations and it was it was great they, they created like these fun food illustrations and colors kind of evolved slightly from the original brand um, so it was just like a refresh that was meant to get us in mm. between the next rebrand. But now I would say it's a lot different. So we are now food focused company. Whereas okay. before we tried to do a lot of things, we were like delivering, trying to get you your electronics from Best Buy or your I've makeup used from Sephora. For that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, makeup from Sephora as well as your like grocery shopping and things like that. But now, you know, leadership made the decision that we are a food focused company. So this mm -hmm. is all about creating craveable food photography. And I've loved seeing like the work that's come out with the brand designers and working with agencies and photo shoots and the the photos, they're not perfect. You know, they're not like these perfect set up lifestyle photos of people eating food or, you know, lifestyle shots or whatever. It's about that messy first bite you know like you're poking mm. into Ooh, the I yolk description yeah your your uh pasta is spiraling off of your fork you know there's a little bit of a stain or a little bit of a drip here or there it's really imperfect and it's all about just making you hungry <laughs> whether it be for you know like the food that you're making at home or like this convenience food that is like it's junk food but also it can look really delicious and really craveable so i would say that's where the instacart brand is going very food focused and that craveable food i mean i'm hungry now just listening to you <laughs> describe those images so i can't imagine what any of the people watching the youtube video having seen some of the images are feeling <laughs> but that's yeah. a fantastic description i love that so instacart like okay has, now has this focus on food and i'm sure that the pandemic i mean maybe had a a bit to do with that but i'm sure that also usage of instacart must have risen a lot during the pandemic right as we're all stuck at home and we couldn't like go out whenever we liked to to go to the store we were relying on on people to to deliver food and you know to have food delivered to our homes how did that impact your work i think it's important to mention that like i went first when i started interviewing with instacart we weren't in the pandemic just yet but throughout mm -hmm. the interview process that's when everything happened so a lot they were going through a lot of changes just as I was interviewing and then as I joined. So I feel like I joined right in the middle of that explosive growth and mm. definitely experienced all of that. How it's changed my role, I would say, even though we experienced a lot of explosive growth last summer and, you know, when it comes to like metric wise of how you measure growth, that's actually an interesting thing because, you know, we obviously can't compete with how we performed that year. And so what is our new normal kind of a thing, mm. especially Ooh, being a pre- pre-IPO company where they want predictable earnings. So these are all things that, you know, I'm hearing a lot <laughs> in uh, company all-hand meetings. But 
it wasn't as busy as it was this past summer because of new structuring of the teams, new marketing initiatives, as I mentioned, like a convenience being a big project last summer or last fall, uh, we did a launch with Walmart. We brought Walmart onto our platform. That was a huge deal because that basically opened up millions, maybe billions of dollars worth of revenue to be able to work with Walmart. So all of these different things and the continual partnerships that we are building every single day that are going on that different team members are working on, I would say it's like all coming together. There's just been a lot of that going on. And I've seen more of the growth this past summer with all of those new marketing initiatives and new leadership and just a lot of eyes on us as a company and within us internally. How it's changed is that um, I'll, I'll just be honest, there's a lot of stressful times sometimes, you know, because especially anything new that you're working on, prepare to work on a lot of different options and have a lot of feedback mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. be adaptable and like not really know wh- where this is going until we kind of nail down the design direction. So you have to be able to pivot a lot and just be a very adaptable designer. And so I would say it's increased my my patience and just like, yeah, just taught me to have more respect for that. Because I don't think I've ever worked with worked on a company that had such high, that wasn't, you know, like with so many eyes on it, you know. Yeah. And more resilience too, maybe it sounds like, you know, getting through these stressful times where everything's really busy and learning, yeah. learning how to do that. I imagine too, given that you're focused on the CRM and like email marketing side of design there, Instacart was probably relying on that more during the pandemic than perhaps before when there'd be a lot of like billboards and I don't know, like posters on the Metro and things like that. But when people are not going outside, you've got to reach them through marketing in in their inboxes and like meet them where they're at. So did that marketing focus change during the pandemic as well? You know, what's funny is that I would say last year, what I heard was that there was like pretty much no marketing. Like we didn't really need to do anything because people were coming to us. It was all word of mouth. Yeah, yeah it was just like, it was like <laughs> a s- essential service that you needed. So there wasn't much yeah. of, and not a lot, we didn't even really need to try hard, you know, then it was more of just like <laughs> brand aware, <laughs> brand awareness and being like, yeah, yeah, communicating things well. And so that's why I say this year is where there's a lot more marketing initiatives. And so now is where we're, we're reaching out more paid advertising, I, I know is a big initiative that we're we need to expand more. Our team is even going to help out a little bit on like reusing because we've created so many things um, for like these convenience projects or it's just anywhere on the CRM side. And now we're trying to find a way of like reusing that for like paid and organic social. So now is when we're ramping up all of that marketing, but we didn't have to do much of it before. Right, right. Well, that's that's kind of cool, isn't it? it? Yeah. <laughs> like you said, that is brand awareness though, right? That's people knowing when the need arose where they should go to get the service that they were after. So it's sort of like the work from a few years before really, really paying off. I love that. Can we dig in a bit more on CRM and Mm -hmm. specifically on like what is involved in that from from your perspective? For example, like what are these assets that you could then reuse for paid? Uh, You mentioned designing things for emails, designing stuff for the marketing website. Is there any other like design projects that come in as part of your role, um, a CRM marketing designer? Yeah. So for me specifically, uh, being like the most senior Mm -hmm. marketing designer on CRM team, I do have a lot more responsibility in that sense. Like um, I would say one of the biggest projects that I owned was the email design kit. So it's kind of like a toolkit, guidelines, templates, kind of like your brand guidelines, but for email and a a little bit more technical because it's, you know, there's a lot of wireframing involved and, um, and this is things that we are using to hand off to the dev team because that's what they're using to actually create. So that has gone through a shift. A different designer started it a year ago, but I've evolved it quite a bit over time, cleaned it up, made it, more user friendly, especially as more designers are using it, really focused on creating guidelines because while my team specifically is is very in tune with what is working, what's right and wrong on the CRM design side, other designers, whether it be the other marketing designers or brand designers, they're not as fluent in in these mm. guidelines. So that was a big thing that I was working on over the summer is just like creating a, like a guidelines and best practice page, you know, really getting into the nitty gritty of like the size of things and 
best practices for exporting, file naming, um, how do you set up your Figma file, how do you name your page, like everything, because every, everybody's doing everything different. <laughs> it needs to all be the same. So uh, owning that email design kit is one of my uh, ongoing projects and, and owning that conversation with the with the dev team. I have weekly meetings with them where we are handing off things or just talking about any kind of hiccups that come up or just any kind of questions. So that's a big part of my role. I also kind of help out with some of the other designers. Like we have a mid-level designer. I kind of work on some projects with her of like, whether it be brainstorming or, um, you know, mentoring, reviewing her projects before she shares it to the creative director. So those kind of like leadership type things that I work on. Um, And outside of that, then it's just like brief kickoffs and working with our various engagement marketing partners on new retailer launches um and so we're creating assets for you know this is like a new retailer that we're launching how are we going to speak to it in push notifications email on site and app in app banners those kinds of things um those are the main assets i would say each project has so those four and you're partnered cool. with a with a writer on all of those. That's great. It's so interesting hearing you talk about the like the system of this all, right? Like essentially you manage the design system for the email kit, like you said. And more and more I'm noticing as I talk to designers about how they do their work and like their specific focus areas, we're not all that different from product designers. It's just that what we're working on is not a product that an end user, like an app they download or an app web app that they go to. Often it's more of like uh, an internal use case thing like with your email kit or it's the marketing website which is a product in and of itself we talked about this in um the episode with notion as part of this season which you haven't heard yet monica because it's not out yet at the time of recording but yeah it's just interesting to me that um the systems thinking you're applying to your role yeah and that's what i mean by like that's something that i've done at like the last two companies i've worked at i've really actually Mm. created um, like at Blue Bottle, we had nothing. And I totally created um, a toolkit in a different program. We use Adobe XD there. And a toolkit there, guidelines, you know, creating like a visual guidelines and just that would help communicate with the marketing side. I had workshops where I was like teaching the new senior designer how to how to use the program. And then also just how, you know, I created like drag and drop components and everything. So I've done that at like the last two companies. So I'm, I'm pretty good at, at creating that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's super important, right? To be able yeah. to do that in, in the role you're in to keep things aligned. Speaking of the marketing website though, what team does that fall under? I think it's owned by not any one particular team, but several. So it's definitely okay. owned by product designers, but we have a lot of mm-hmm. different product designers, whether they be like they're focusing on the shopper end or the customer side enterprise. Um, they all own a different part of the process. Maybe it's like billing or, you know, some, some other subset. So it's always a product designer. So whenever we're handing off those assets, occasionally they'll come back because something is like needs to be fixed or there's something not quite right about the specs. Um, that's when, when a product designer will come in. I'm like, oh, you're the one that's working on this. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's product designers, but it's such a big, there's so many of them. I couldn't pinpoint like which team it is because I think it's gotcha. owned by all No, of that's them. fine. Well, that actually brings me to another question is how often do you collaborate or meet with product designers at Instacart? Do you have like wider design team meetings and crit sessions or anything like that? Or are there simply just too many of you? So when we were part of the design org, that's where we were all mixed together. And so when mm-hmm. I had so when we had our, because, uh, you know, each team, larger team has their own meetings. It's different from like the company all hands because that's everybody. But then you have like maybe monthly meetings with your team. So for me, it's the brand and marketing now. But before when we were under the design org, then I would have a little bit more access to seeing what they were working on or hear more of their names. So we don't interact that much anymore um, other than just like when we're tapping in on these projects that we're working on, like, oh, we're working on a new banner for this new retailer and we need to hand it off to them. So not as much as I would like, but that's actually like a goal of mine uh, is to collaborate more with product designers at some point at Instacart. Yeah, I like that. I think that's a good goal to have. That's what we're, we're working on right now at ConvertKit as well as more collaboration. Let's dive into a recent project of yours. You've mentioned this convenience like 
push into this this new space, right? Which I feel like would be a good, I mean, it's fresh in your mind. You've just completed it. Let's talk through the project. Where does this start? Like for you specifically, where does it land on your desk? Um, at what point in the process and who does it come from? So starting off with a new project. So convenience is a big one because it's considered a, a new marketing initiative. So we have tiers of projects right now that are going through different like leadership review, whether something is, is more higher vis- visibility would be a tier one versus a tier two. So convenience okay. was considered a tier one project uh, this past summer. So how it would start uh, is there would be like these sandbox meetings where the marketing stakeholder or whoever is involved would bring their briefs and really discuss it. This is more so with the leadership team. So we don't, as individual contributors, we don't have to go to that. I, I went to some of them in the beginning, but things were new and it wasn't very productive for me. So I quickly stopped attending because um, they were just discussing a brief <laughs> that may or may not come about. So I'm like, why? Right, right, I, right. I didn't, want, <laughs> I didn't want to fill my brain with that. So they have these meetings where they're discussing the brief, kind of poking holes and being like, is this really something that we should be focusing our time on? And so that hopefully when it funnels down to actually being resourced, kinks have been worked out and it's like, this is something we should be doing. So before anything ever gets to me, you know, it's starting somewhere off there where leadership is talking through the greater initiative. And then from there, it's kind of, it's resource to like the different subsets, like, you know, is this more of a brand thing, marketing, is it CRM? So then, mm-hmm. you know, each, we all have our own PMs, which we call them program managers. And so then it'll kind of go to one of those. And then from there, you know, that program manager, as well as like, let's say with my, with the creative director on my team, they'll kind of discuss who should be working on it specifically within our team, whether it be on bandwidth or specialty, or like this person Mm -hmm. always works on these types of projects. Although we do mix it up every once in a while. So that's kind of how, um, how the briefs start and how things get resourced. That sounds like there's a really solid process in place for like the project management side of it. And that you as a designer, what I'm hearing is don't really have to worry about that because it's sort of, it's being sorted. You know that some, you can trust that someone else is scoping the work and like figuring out when you're going to fit it in. And I assume that you can, you know, push back when needed on that if you notice that things haven't been scoped quite right. But um, yeah, someone who does all of the like, project management and stuff as well as the design work and all that. I'm like a little bit jealous. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. I think process is something that always suffers in a lot of companies. I I don't think I've ever worked at a company that has gotten it right. You know, like it's, it's a work in progress. It's there's always always room to improve. Yeah. There's always room to improve. So, so I would say this has been improving a lot over the last couple of months, because again, with different people coming into the company, we have had so many new people on like the executive level coming in. I think this is like their way of really getting to the bottom of like, are we spending our time where we should be? That's not to say that things don't come in that we don't question. Like I give it to the writers because they really dissect the briefs because a lot of times writers are starting the projects. Most of the time, they're the ones that are probably asking even more questions and and they're just like this doesn't make sense or it's too vague or something so there are definitely things that come through that could be refined but I think that step helps totally like other people have already poked at it by the time it comes to you so some of those questions that you might have had someone else might have already asked speaking of process and like project management just as a quick aside what uh tools are used at Instacart as part of this to yeah track the workflow yeah so we use Rike. we use that as our um, resourcing for new projects you know that's where Mm -hmm. you would upload the brief any kind of documents that's where you know tasks are created by the program manager with milestones of like what's the live date and then working backwards as all the different steps you know like a marketing first looks leadership review partner review legal review we have so many steps in there. That's kind of what we use to house it. It's it's not a perfect tool. We're all still learning how to use it. Um, I, I feel like we're not using it to the fullest potential because it, mm. it is a beast of a tool um, and there's a lot more that we could be doing. But we're also trying to keep communication there. So like when you're posting something for a mm. first review, you would be posting a link from a deck, which is where we kind of put our screenshots and things like that. Uh, with links to like Figma and Copy Docs and all that. But we try to keep the conversation within Rike as one, you know, solid system. Outside of that, I mean, I think, you know, the Google things, you know, that's how you access your email. 
Google Meet. We use Zoom for other bigger meetings uh, where they're over like, I don't know, say 20 people. And what else? Uh, you know, the designers use Figma and like the Adobe Creative Suite. Cool. Is design feedback given within Figma or within Rike? It kind of depends. Like if it's overarching feedback, more in-depth feedback, we definitely want it in Rike so that it's documented mm -hmm. and it's like it's there in its complete form. But sometimes it's really helpful to use like the Figma commenting system and you yeah. know, point exactly like, oh, this is what I'm talking about. Because if you put it here, it's like, what do you mean? And then you got to slack them and find out. So legal actually does a lot of their comments directly in Figma. So um, cool. they, yeah, so it's a little bit of both, you know, I would say more of like, the overarching feedback and themes and documenting things, even if you're kind of like saying, oh, hey, I left comments in Figma, that kind of a thing. And then specific to design and copy are directly in Figma. Thanks for indulging me in my nerdy tool <laughs> aside, but let's get back to this um, convenience project that you worked on. So you've got the brief, it's sort of been vetted and it's clear to you now what you need to do. What were the things that you needed to design for it? And what did that design process look like? Like how many rounds did it go through? How long did you have for it? Give us the deets. <laughs> yeah. So again, for a lot of these projects, at least on my team, like I mentioned, the main assets are things like push notifications, email, website, and in-app banners. Um, those are like the, the main ones, but we're creating lots of different versions. So let's say like one of the bigger ones in the beginning I remember was 7-Eleven. That's an example where we're kind of merging both brands, the Instacart brand, mm. the 7-Eleven brand. Mm. Um, so there, there would have been an, a launch there. And then there was also like ongoing email launches and just, you know, continuing to reach out to the customer for different things. So sometimes we're specific to the retail and sometimes we're like more food specific. But from there, it's like coming up with, you know, after the, br the brief kickoff, then um, the designer and writer are partnering together. Sometimes the writer will start first. Sometimes the designer will start first. Sometimes it's together. It depends because of timelines of things. And we're coming up with, with different ideas based off of whatever whatever they're trying to sell, whatever they're trying to target. Sometimes we're, we're looking at specific things like with convenience. There were a couple of projects where they were like, oh, we want to do something game day related. So let's focus on like hot dogs and chips mm. and what are the, what, you know, chips and guac. What are the kind of things that you would want to eat on a game day? So from there, it's coming up on the design side with a lot of visuals. So a lot of stock photography. <laughs> So I spend a lot of time looking through food photos on stock on stock sites, trying to find those gems um, and put and putting things together because you know you're never going to find the perfect photo and you need to like merge things together. Again, that's where like the photo retouching comes in. Totally. Um, I spend a lot of time coming up with different options there, like so not even just different combinations of food, different background colors. The way that convenience design is. Uh, I think one of the brand designers worked on a toolkit for this, which kind of gave us some guidelines of what to follow for this new initiative. And so there was gradient colors involved, a little bit of neon, because with convenience, it's kind of like ah. that late night craving. Yeah. So yeah. leaning, yeah, leaning into like neon lights. So those were kind of some of the design things that we were working with, with these very specific gradient colorways, um, neon lines uh, in the background, and then this craveable convenience food so taking those and creating lots of different variation different color different color va variations different food options and that's kind of what I'm working on and I share that internally with the creative director on on my team and kind of get his take and be like hey what what are your thoughts on these um, any feedback there could be some refinement there my personal process is to show a lot of options especially with these big okay. projects i want to show five to ten options and and i'm just taking one asset so like i'm not doing this for all of them like i'm starting with right. email for example mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i create one email one one version so we're not focusing on, on all the different um incentives and variants and all that i'm taking one email and then i'm designing five to ten different headers and maybe the writer has five different headlines as well or subheads or different body copy or, or so forth. So it's more about variety in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Share it if there's any kind of feedback and then we address that there. Then it's, it goes into a marketing first looks where we're sharing it with the marketing stakeholder, getting their take on it. From there, it goes into leadership review. So we use some internal decks 
to communicate with legal where we, we put screenshots and links to all of the things and it needs to get like their stamp of approval. Then it goes to a partner review. Um, so like in 7-Eleven example, mm -hmm. then it would need to go to them. That's a stage that can sometimes take a while and it can sometimes push back a launch because the retailer takes their time. Like we have an expectation of how long it might take, but it, you know, it's, maybe it's supposed to be three days, but then it ends up being a week, two weeks on a very extreme case, even longer. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's out of our hands. If they take longer, yeah, then, yeah. then that's their fault. But once it passes that, then it also has to go through a legal review. That's the, the absolute last step. Uh, and then we're handing things off to the dev team. So it's kind of like from start oh, wow. to finish. It's a lot of, yeah. there's a and lot of How long does this there. take? I know that you mentioned the, yeah. like the review part can often take a while, but what about the, the design phase itself? Like maybe to reach the point when you're sharing it with the partners, when the internal stakeholders reviewed it, you've done your options and settled on one um, for this project. What was the timeline? Yeah. In the summer, this past summer, when we were doing a lot of uh, convenience projects, there would be like literally kickoffs, like three, four, five new convenience briefs every week or more so there was just so many of them coming at us so those ones were very quick turnaround time we might have like a day to work on design wow. options internally like you know like mm -hmm. after <laughs> after things are kicked off you know maybe a day or two or three before um internal review is due and then you know a day after for marketing sometimes and sometimes with the tight turnaround times some of these milestones would even be stacked like internal wow. review would be the same day as marketing first looks, you know, this, and, and that made it to where it was like, okay, the first one, we'll make sure it's done by the morning and then the other one by the end of the day, kind of a thing. If it was the same day, we have gotten them out pretty quickly, you know, within maybe a couple of days, a week at most right now, because we're much more um, efficient with creating these projects. Now we know what we're creating. Nothing is a surprise, you know, so they're going yeah. a lot more smoothly now and we have a little bit more time. But yeah, it could have been as quickly as a couple of days a week. Wow. That's really surprising to me because I feel like you often hear like the bigger a company gets, like the slower projects are and like the longer it takes to get through things but it sounds like you have like a lengthy process and that there's a lot of steps to it but that you can get through it very quickly you know and that it's very efficient like knowing when to move one thing along yeah that's that's super interesting to me i was not expecting you to say a day in in response to my question just then <laughs> yeah a day or two for it could be as quick as a day or two like you know yeah it's it's hard to say um and especially like with the crm team there's a big amount of volume of projects. Like I mentioned that in July, we went through like July or August, I can't remember. We went through 3X amount of projects we did the previous month. It's, it's September, end of September now. We're almost at 300 projects for my team specifically. Um, so it's it's a lot higher pace, the CRM marketing design team. A lot, a lot more of the volume of projects and we're expected more like Yep. Oh, it's it's going to increase like the amount of partnerships we're, we're actually have heard that we now want to get leadership or I don't really know where this is coming from they want to get it down to where something is executed within like three to five days like completely like from start to finish yep. and so we're onboarding agencies um, to kind of help with mm -hmm. some of that repetitive work. Um, and so we're doing things that will help us scale because it's just not possible with three CRM marketing yeah. designers and a production designer and, and remaining sane because it's a lot of things yes. to keep straight in your head because when totally. you're working on all of these projects, it's like you have to remember all of these things about these different partnerships. So we have things in place where we're going to work with agencies and, and help us scale over time. That sounds like quite the challenge. And I'm glad to hear that you're tackling it and knowing that you need extra resources for it as well, though. And not just like being like, well, we'll make do. Because <laughs> that's that's not healthy for anyone involved. <laughs> what about the, the end of this project? So it's launched now. You mentioned before that the work you do as a marketing designer is more, you know, driven by money and like revenue and it's got yeah money behind it and different success metrics as well. Can we talk a bit about those metrics of success? Um, this convenience store project, for example, what was the performance measured by for this work? 
since everything is so new, we don't have anything to measure it on. And we have started attending these like weekly meetings where the CRM team is discussing performance because um, we've actually been kind of sheltered from it a lot. Not on purpose, but I don't know, it just it wasn't shared. So they're slowly bringing us in so that we can see how things are performing and kind of learn from that. You kind of have to take it with a grain of salt, though, because just because something is performing well, we still really don't know why. <laughs> like, There's so many factors that could go into it, right? We, yeah. Yeah, we could hypothesize why. And, and actually, sometimes sometimes people on the creative team are challenging them. They're like saying, oh, we think this did well because of, of this, but we don't really know. So it's it's a lot to take in. So that's kind of where we might learn a little bit more about how things are performing. I don't have like specific statistics off of the top of my head, but I know that convenience has performed very well. That has done very well. Uh, in testing and so much so that now we have to pivot back to grocery shopping because now everybody's doing convenience. (laughs) Convenience, Now we need to get them, (laughs) now we need to get them to make their grocery order again. So now we kind of have to like switch there. When you say that it's been performing well, you mean like orders, right? Like that people are using the feature and like, you know, shopping with the retail partners through Instacart. That's the main thing that is measured after one of your projects ships. Yeah. So think other things that I would say are measured are like basket size. So that's something that, you know, the amount of money someone is spending per order. Uh, And with convenience orders, it's a lot different because with grocery orders, we have like a $35 minimum for like free shipping and all those kinds of things or lower fees and and that kind of a thing. Like until you spend a certain amount, it kind of doesn't make sense. I mean, you can, it's just going to cost a lot more in in fees. And so with convenience it's really hard to spend $35, you know, because these are cheap items. So it's like lowering the minimum on that, you know, maybe it might be like $10 or something. So looking at increasing that basket size over time, repeat orders. So first of all, getting them to, you know, mm-hmm. try it out and then repeat orders. And those are the the biggest metrics I would say that we're looking at. How often are they ordering? You know, are they trying out different retailers? Do they only order from Walmart or 7-Eleven or whatever? How do we get them to try it out for other things? You can also order for other people. You don't have to order just for yourself. You could, you could choose any old address you want. Yeah, there's there's a lot of things like that that can be measured. And what about you as a senior marketing designer in particular? Are there certain metrics you're held accountable to? Is the main thing you're accountable for producing the work on time and meeting all these tight deadlines? Not exactly. Like I wouldn't say that I'm like required to finish X amount of projects kind of mm-hmm. a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm glad that we don't have that kind of a metric because that would just be very stressful. Although if that were the case, the CRM team would win. <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, if that truly were a contest, but yeah, we don't have like a specific amount. Um, for me, my own like personal metrics is like, you know, being able to work on higher impact projects and, you know, then kind of delegate out the other ones, whether it be to, you know, like a mid-level designer and kind of mentoring that process or handing off like a lot of CPG things to the agency so that I have more time and energy to work on higher impact projects. And that's just how I will, I will grow. And, and that's kind of how I'm assessed, you know, like how much, how much impact am I having on the projects and the Mm. people that I'm working with? And that impact that you're having on the projects and the people you're working with, is that more of a qualitative thing than quantitative? Like it's not impact that you're having isn't measured by a number of something. It's more the sense of what strategy level things that you're contributing to and um, yeah, making sure you're delegating things like that. Yeah, exactly. Because as I I mentioned that we have like different tiers, like tier one, tier two projects. Convenience was a was a tier one. Eventually, it'll be a tier two though, because it won't be as important. So or new, yeah, yeah, or new because it mean just means that there's less eyes on it if it if it falls to a tier two. Yeah, working on those tier one projects. Um, I, I worked on a back to school campaign. Uh, collaborated with another marketing designer on that. That's that was a tier one project. So those ones that have high visibility. Yep, making sure you're on them. Can you give an example of a tier two? Is it more like, say, convenience for the launch was a tier one, but ongoing, if you add a new retailer, it might be a tier two? Yeah, that's a good point. So like a touch two, there's a lot of times where you're, maybe if it's a new retailer, there's that first launch, but then they want to have multiple partnerships after that, or there's just some kind of contract that we're fulfilling. Once we've kind of nailed down that launch, those other ones could be considered tier two. Actually, a lot of life cycle projects, I would say, are a tier two because those are just our own brand 
and ongoing projects. And yes, they're important, but they don't have like another partner involved. And and there's just Mm. a little bit more leeway there. So I would say that those are tier two projects, something that had less assets, you know, maybe just like it's a one off thing. There's a lot of projects that don't even touch design. Like there's a lot of projects that the writers do. They're, they're working on push notifications. You know, that's a big Mm. thing that they're, they're working on. And I won't even know that project at all because it'll just kind of have gone you know around me um that's probably like a tier two project as well yeah that makes a lot of sense let's end by actually you know what one question before i get to the serious ending question but a slightly less serious one is are you just hungry all of the time when you do your work (laughs) because i feel like i've gotten progressively hungrier as we've done this interview (laughs) yeah i i truly with the new direction of the food photography it is so appetizing you know and like i'm (laughs) I'm not a big like, and then when it comes to the convenience stuff, I, I don't eat a lot of that kind of junk food. Like, you know, that's something maybe on a road trip you might have, but it's like, it's making me want to make these bad food decisions. <laughs> 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 like, so. But yeah, it's, I feel it's, like I would struggle with that too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And now, okay, for the actual last question that I want to ask you is um, during your time at Instacart, what are you most proud of from your time there? Maybe it's a project, maybe it's a certain impact. I feel like when you work in tech, you know, one year is like five years. <laughs> you know, you oh, do yeah. so especially you do, with the amount of projects you're working on. <laughs> yeah, you do so much work. Um, and so, you know, some people are like a year and a half, but like that's like a lot. <laughs> I've done a lot of things in that time. So things that I'm most proud of, notable things, like I like I mentioned working on the Walmart launch. I would say that was like one of my first biggest projects or highest visibility projects of last year that was a big deal, you know, for Walmart to join the Instacart platform. Love being able to say that I've sort of worked with Walmart in that sense. I worked on a lot of campaigns as well um, that had high visibility. Um, Another one I like to mention that I worked on for St. Patrick's Day because um, something I designed was featured on on Jimmy Kimmel Live. It was an Instacart skit. So like I designed some end cards that were related to the campaign that I designed for. So I like to say that something I design has been seen by millions. It literally so, has. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so those are fun things to mention. But honestly, I think the things that I'm most proud of are anytime I can make design easier, more efficient, better for myself and the team. So things like working process oriented things like the email design kit, creating new templates, rethinking email, adding motion. I love working with, you know, our motion designer on on adding a little bit of motion here and there. Working with the dev team, you know, it's not always fun. <laughs> but like all of these things, these process oriented things and just making things better and more efficient. I like to make my life easier and and for the designers around me. So those are smaller, less visible, you know, not as exciting, but I think very important things. I love that. Well, thanks so much, Monica, for everything you shared. This has been like a fascinating look into the efficiency and processes of a bigger company for me, and I'm sure for a lot of our listeners as well. And I really appreciate you sharing your insights. Yeah, it's great. And I love being able to share the things that we're working on. You know, we're really changing a lot. And so I can't wait to see how Instacart grows over the next one, three, five years and how I was a part of that. Totally. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the intricacies of Monica's role as a marketing designer working on the CRM team at Instacart. A lot of the designers that I speak to on the series are on smaller teams or they're on a larger team, but they're responsible for the marketing design of a certain product. So it was super interesting for me to hear about the ways that things are structured at Instacart based on channels instead. And I hope that was interesting for you as well. You can get more episodes of this show at insidemarketingdesign.co. We've talked to a lot of really interesting companies by now. And if you want to hear more from Monica, she actually actually has a YouTube channel of her own, which you should go check it out and subscribe to. It'll be linked in the description, but it's called Monica's Design Process, and I highly recommend you check it out. Thanks again to Webflow for sponsoring the show. Thank you to you for listening, and I will see you next week. Bye.